Hello everyone, today we're going to be diving deep into IV testing. We're going to talk about how do we ensure we are unifying machine learning. So the main points we're going to be talking about is property based testing and hypothesis. Second is IV testing pipeline. Third, we're going to be talking about IV test decorators. Last but not least, how to write an IV test. So first, let's have a, a really simple example. Um, on how to write a unit test. So in this case, we are writing a unit test for a function called apps, which basically returns the absolute values of the input. And we're using a package called bytest here. You can use any kind of testing package you, you want, but uh, in this case, we are using bytest. And we can see that there is, there is two main points to look at here. First is the the creator from PyTest called parameterize, and the second is the test function itself. So the test function de defines how do we test the function, basically, and how do we ensure and assert that the output of the function is correct. So in the case of test apps, we basically take two parameters, array input and expected, and we call the, the function IV apps on the array input and we see if it's equal to the expected or not. And that's how we test the function. But we, in the function itself, we don't define how or what inputs are going to be passed. We use PyTest to define that here. So PyTest gives us a decorator called parameterize, which takes two inputs, the first being the parameters we're going to be passing and the second is the examples we're going to be passing to the test function. So we tell by test we have two inputs, array input and expected, and these two should match with the test function um, itself. And the second input is the examples we want to call the function with. So in this case, we're going to be calling test apps with the first parameter being a list of negative three, and the second parameter being an IV array of three, which if you take the IV apps of negative three, it should return an IV array of three. So that's how we usually do a unit test. And it is usually okay. We still do it in some places of IV, but when you start to expand and write more testing, it is really hard to write uh, kind of good examples. And some functions are really complex to test. And eventually, if you want to test all the possible ways and combinations of calling the function, you will end up having a grid search. This is not really efficient and can make tests really slow, especially that we are calling it with arrays. And not all um, frameworks can run on GPU, for example, to make it really fast. So we have to find an alternative with that. So already we can spot some quite a few differences between unit test and property-based testing. So in unit test, we define the examples explicitly. And in property-based testing, we can't do that. We actually define how the input should be like. And then we randomly generate these inputs. So we don't have to write each example by ourselves. But given that we are randomizing the input, we don't know the exact answer or the exact output of the function that is correct. So we can just have an equality test in that case. If you look at the example of test apps written in priority based testing, let's ignore the given decorator for now, but let's say that this given decorator will generate us a random input that is correct and can be passed to the IV apps function. But how do we sh make sure here that the input is correct? First of all, we call the function on the input, and then we assert that the minimum value of the output must be more than or equal to zero. So that is basically a property of the IV apps function, because we know that the absolute values will not contain any negative numbers. 
and no matter what the input is if we don't have any idea about we know that it shouldn't contain a negative number and if it does this means the IV apps function is behaving incorrectly this way can actually we can actually miss some cases and if you want to do a fully testing we we can also assert for the data type of the return and we can assert the shape of the return is actually correct because if you pass a list of five elements we are expecting a return of five elements too a list of five elements too so that's one way of testing the function and property based testing is usually when you write this function the different the body the test function body gonna be different from one function to another but in IV we actually don't do it that way in IV we have more than one backend and that's a great thing because we can make we can make use of it so we call the function two times one in the ground truth backend that we are testing against and one of the framework that we are testing for and we take the input from both of them make an assert that both of the results from different backends are equal and in that way we don't have to make assumptions or write a really thorough test about how the function or the return type or the return data should be like but instead we do an element wise equality between different frameworks and in that way we can test the function even with a random input and we also test that we are having a consistent behavior across backends. Now let's go back to hypothesis and look at how to write a property based testing. The given decorator here is our entry point to hypothesis and it tells hypothesis that given that input we call the function test apps and it will be completely randomized. We also use what is called strategies from hypothesis and a strategy is how we define how will input how our input will be like it's our way to communicate with hypothesis and tell us until it that we want some kind of list here we want an, a number to be generated we want a boolean to be generated and so on so we know that apps function takes an array of numbers and in that test we are actually not fully testing against all numbers we're only testing against integers but for simplifications that's completely fine so we call the given decorator and we say array input equal is t list so we are telling hypothesis that we want to generate a list of elements which is integers which we describe here in the first input and we also give some properties to the list that will be generated. We want to say that the minimum element in the list should be at least one and the maximum elements in the list should be five. And then if we actually run this hypothesis will run and generate a random input every time and call the test function with. So we don't have to write any explicit examples by ourselves and we'll also make use of the parameters that we passed in here it will generate a list of integers that at least have one element in the list and a maximum of five elements in the list so why do we use hypothesis why don't we just write our own random number generator you can already see that we shouldn't reinvent the wheel but is that if that is not convincing enough for you that's completely understandable Hypothesis have a really cool future and it's called shrinking. So looking at the previous example of how we wrote the test for IV apps, hypothesis at first can generate a list of that of that look. So it has a, a list of eight elements of it in it and it contains some numbers, some are positive, some are negative and a zero here. And if you call the IV apps on this input and let's say that our function is implemented incorrectly and that it returns the input as it is in this case 
this input should make the function fail and the test will fail but hypothesis don't just throw this error at us and say hey look at this example it failed now go fix it it will actually try to do something called shrinking and make this example easier and then it will try to shrink the example by making it smaller in this way and easy to understand so going from eight elements in the list to four elements in the list and also we see the range of values in the list itself is shrinking is getting smaller towards zero and eventually hypothesis will shrink to this example this minimal example that will cause the test to fail so each strategy in hypothesis has its own way of shrinking for a list it shrinks by making the list smaller it has less items in it and for integers they shrink by going towards zero so for example if you generate one uh, a number that is being one million and you call the IV apps on it and it fails so negative one million and it fails it won't just throw this one million at you it will actually shrink and keeps getting smaller towards zero eventually returning negative one and you know that this is the minimal example and it's just not some random example being thrown at you so this is a really cool future of hypothesis and makes everything easier for you because if you try to call let's say you have a function that takes multiple inputs and these all three inputs are arrays and you end up with each element that is causing the test to fail being something as complex as this one it's really hard to spot where is the issue coming from but if hypothesis helps you and gives you this minimal example it's easy to look that oh it fails on something really simple like negative one then it's probably something really fundamental in this in the function itself and that saves you a lot of time of debugging and wandering around because everything is being randomized and it's most likely that if a random input causing the function to fail it's not easy to spot the why it's failing so that's one reason we like hypothesis and we use hypothesis in ivy also hypothesis gives us what is called strategies and a strategy is basically a way to communicate to hypothesis and tell us and tell it how we want our input to be generated we describe our input to be generated using strategies we already had a look at the list strategy and integer strategy but hypothesis has more of this it has a boolean strategy which can generate either true or false it has integer strategy which can generate integer numbers similarly it has floats lists and one of the important strategies too is one-off so one-off takes multiple strategies as an input and returns one strategy that we can use later so for example if you want to generate a list of integers and floats how we can do that so we call the list strategy first and we give it an input as one of integers or floats so in this way you can actually build way complex strategies using this atomic strategies that is the given by for us by hypothesis one more strategy that is really important is sample from and this strategy returns an element returns a sample from elements in a list and there is way way more strategies that is out of the box from hypothesis if you want to read more about them i suggest you go to hypothesis docs and have a look at their docs so we also in ivy provide our own strategies because we have a lot of functions that requires more complex strategies either than the, the naive ones that is provided by hypothesis itself so for example we can or we need get shape strategy if you want to test a function that creates an array we also need get dtype strategy which gives us a valid dtype 
and uh, if you want to also create an array or test a function that creates an array then also get the types won't return any kind of data type that is supported by the backend or IV itself but it will do it in a more smart way it will return a data type that is supported by the function we are testing for which is something necessary if we want to make sure we are testing the function correctly and not just throwing any random data type in also we have a number strategy which is basically a combination of float and integer strategy but also with more boundary checking and more behavior so we can actually generate a number of data type int 8 for example and it will range from negative 128 to 127 we have a strategy called data type and values and this is one of the most used strategies in, in IV D type and values returns two lists each containing a data type and the second list is containing an array that is randomly generated containing numbers uh, of the correct data types for the function itself we're gonna have a, a deeper look at d types and values later when you start describing how to write an IV test and also there is a lot more in IV hypothesis helpers which I also suggest that you go to the docs itself and look at them more now let's have a look at IV tests in pipeline so our first the first step in the testing itself is generating our data and we can do that using IV strategies or hypothesis strategies right away the next step is pre-execution test processing and that is we should prepare and make our inputs um, correct so for example we know that back in torch won't accept for example a tensorflow input and we have to make a copy of the random generated list and then call the function in that backend with that copy so this is just basic making sure that the input is called in the correct way and if you look at the example here it's, it, it is not correctly it is not directly wrote in IV in that way we actually combine these two steps um, in a one step but it's easier and simpler to look at it in that way it is more efficient to do these two steps in one step because we are sitting in the back end multiple times here so in the pre-execution test processing we make sure that the array is the correct um, type so if it's a torch it's going to be a torch by torch tensor if it's a tensor flow it's going to be um, a tensor flow tensor we also make sure the data type is correct so we cast all the data type that is generated to the specific backend data type and then later after this step which is also does a lot more under the hood but we're gonna just simplify this by you saying that only it converts the array into the framework specific type we do the test execution step which calls the function in the back end using the framework array input so remember that we said in IV we don't do a full property based testing but instead we compare across back ends and that is we for sure know that these two functions should return the same output regardless of the back end that is being set so in that case we turn we call the IV apps using torch framework and we call the IV apps using tensorflow framework and we store both of these results uh, later on we do an element wise that is the last stage on the testing pipeline we do an element wise equality between the return and the return ground truth and we also ensure the return data type is equal we do a lot more than that in actual ivy but it's only for simplification here that we only show how we could possibly do that there's multiple ways to do how there's multiple ways to do this kind of checking but basically we just do an element wise equality
in IV we have test decorators and we have at the moment four of them what they do is kind of saves a lot of repeated work that we do for every test so for example it generates a random flags that will generate be generated for any test anyways so we don't have to write it manually it also does sim some preprocessing for the function we are testing so we can know in advance what kind of function we are testing and what kind of data types that it supports now let's have a look at the handle this decorator example so this is an actual IV test function from the code base and we are still testing for the function IV.apps this is being split into two main parts, the decorator itself and the test function. If we have a look at the test function, we do some um, unpacking first, and then we call a test function from our helpers. And what this test function does is basically the steps from pre-execution to test results. It does all of that by itself, but we have to only provide the input um, that data generated input for it now looking at this we we can see that some parameters here are not being explicitly set in the handle test decorator and handle test decorator is just an alternative way for doing add given decorator but it does more under the hood we see that we use IV strategy helpers here just simple strategy is being used but we see that there is a lot more flags here that are not being explicitly set and this is exactly the job of the decorator handle list it will generate these objects here so for example this flags function name ground truth backend is being explicitly generated by the handle test decorator and we don't have to do that every time and why do we have to def define function tree in the handle test decorator instead of defining it here so in the function tree in the handle test decorator we define the function tree because we need to know information before we call the test function itself so in that case we want to know what kind of data types that the IV app support because it's being called here and we have to do that sampling in a smart way so this is just one case of how handle test saves a lot of time by doing a lot of work for us and then we just simply take these inputs here and pass it down the tree and we don't have to worry about them they're completely generated randomly by the handle test decorator the handle test decorator will generate the test flags, function name, ground truth backend, and some of these are actually fixtures, which is some kind of global test variables that you don't have to worry about. The only thing that we are generating here by ourselves is D type and X, and that's how we describe the input should be like. And remember, D type and X returns a list of data type and also a list of possible inputs to the function. Why does it return a list? Because a function can have more than one input as an array. So for example, iv.add takes on two arrays and does the add element-wise operation on them. And we can specify a parameter in dtype and values that tells the strategy to return two elements, two arrays, not one array. And that's why we always return a list and we tell helpers this function that you want to call the function IV apps using x equal x0 as an input. And there's still and that just says that we want to use the first array in the list. Now let's have a look at how to write an IV test. So here we are looking at IV add, and we know from the function definition of IV add that it takes two arrays as an input and it takes a parameter called alpha. Uh, 
and parameter alpha is just being multiplied by the input, the first array input, and then the add operation is being done. I have removed some lines of code here because the test function is really long, and also these parameters here are not being set by us, it's being set by the handle test decorator that and these functions and these parameters we don't have any control over so just to make the test look shorter and appear in the presentation i just remove these lines of code so you don't have to worry about them so now looking at how to write an iv test we have to use the handle disk decorator and handle test is just the same works the same as the given decorator from hypothesis it accepts the strategies but also with quite more parameters that help us in the testing itself so the first parameter we have to define is the function tree and that is the full function path that we can call the function with. So iv.add is located under the functional sub package in iv and that's why we say functional.iv.add. And then we describe how the input should be like. So we call the strategy dtype and values which generates dtypes and arrays and we tell it that we want the number of arrays to be two. So it will return us two lists. The first list will have two data types. Each corresponds to the arrays being returned in the second list. The second list will have two arrays. One is corresponding to x1 and the second is for x2, as we can see here. And then we also describe that we want our alpha to be a float number and it has a minimum value of negative 5 and the maximum value of 5. And we also pass that down the tree to the helper test function, which will then create the IV arrays or the backend specific arrays and make sure this input is correct and call the function with this input on the generated arrays. And then do the equality test between the backends we are testing. And this is it. This is not meant to be an alternative to reading the docs. The docs has more details and an in-depth talk about how we write IV tests and how the decorators work. And we talk about IV strategies himself. So it's always good to refer to the docs for more detailed information about how to write an IV test and what the strategies in IV exactly do. This just uh, give you a general overview of how the IV testing pipeline works. Thank you.